This game is called Arakeen Arim, which means playing or having fun. This game was played in Central Australia and it's a hitting game. So the aim of this game is to get a kanga bat and a tennis ball and hit the ball as far as you can. Oh, also, you'll need a hoop. I'll explain that a bit later. In pairs, your teammate will underarm throw the ball to about your chest height, not in front, a little to the side, so that you can hit the ball as far as you can in the air or along the ground. The fielding team will try to catch the ball and throw it back to your teammate, of which you get five turns of hitting the ball. The other variation is that the fielder can throw the ball back and if it lands in the hoop or through it, then it's another batter's turn. The best distance out of five turns of who bats the ball the longest before being out by the fielder throwing the ball through the hoop. Scoring. The best out of five turns or who bats the ball the longest before being out by the fielder throwing the ball through the hoop. Karumba was played by the Gubby Gubby people of South Queensland. Each team represents a group. The aim of the game is to push the other fella out of the circle. This game is a form of wrestling involving players of the opposite team to push or pull the players out of the circle. This game is suitable for young players and remember, pushing only. Mark a circle with a diameter of 3 to 5 metres or use a circle on a basketball court. You can use a gymnastic mat or indoor facility, the choice is yours. The game starts in the middle with hands on the other person's shoulder. Facing each other, pushing only. One point is scored each time a player pushes his or her opponent completely out of the circle or line. Try the best out of three and remember there's no punching or kicking involved. This is a game called Gitcha, which means playing or having fun. Now this, uh, this game actually comes from North Queensland and it is played for with 10 to 14 or even more children. The aim is to catch Gitcha. It is a running and chasing game. To start, one person will be Gitcha and the others will be doing his or her best to not be caught. The children will then form a circle holding hands. One person will stand in the middle of the circle who plays the part of mistakenly eating Gitcha's food. Gitcha will stay on the outside of the linked hand circle. The game starts, Gitcha attempts to catch or touch the player in the middle. The players holding hands can do their best to block Gitcha from entering the circle. Gitcha can duck under arms but cannot break the clasp of hands. Players may bend down to stop Gitcha. The player in the middle is allowed to be let through the circle as well to run away from Gitcha. Players must remain in the boundaries of the circle, either in or just outside. Scoring. The game is over when Gitcha catches the person in the middle or in a set time. Wichum. Wichum is a silent robbery game. This is a great group activity which consists of stalking the feather of an emu, imitating and hunting. It's recognised that players will hunt differently. The aim is to be the best hunter or performer. So the person in the middle of the circle will hold a stick with a feather tied on the end. If you do not have a stick, you can hold the feather over your head or crouch so the performer can reach the feather. The performer will be dressed in corroboree costume to enter the circle with a shield and boomerang. The performer will move around the circle a number of times with his or her eye on this feather. The performer will enter the circle and touch the feather, being the emu. Each member who form the circle will take turns at being the performer in the silent game. The winner is the best corroboree performer, voted by the group overall. Bordrin, 
This is a traditional game in South Queensland played by groups such as the Kabi Kabi people. Now the ball was made out of kangaroo skin that was stuffed with grass and then sewn together with sinew. This was called the Borigin. Players used to mark their applause by calling out E. And this game was so popular that it was played until sunset. There was no offside in this game, except that players may not stand in the in-goal area to receive the ball. To score a touchdown, a player must run across the baseline of the other end of the court without being touched. One team starts the game from behind the baseline. Opposition players are not allowed to interfere or intercept this first pass. A player in possession of the ball may run with it as far as possible unless he or she is touched by a player from the opposing team. A player with the ball who is touched must pass the ball as soon as possible. He or she has two steps if running or a quick one-two count if stationary or walking. The opposition may not interfere with the pass but can intercept it. The idea is to pass to another player on the same team who is able to run across the baseline without being touched. Remember, this is an ancient game, so play by the rules and have fun.